So guys, we're going to get into spoilers now. So if you haven't seen this film, get on out of here. Unless you want to listen in and you can't be fucked going to the cinema. Uh, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, because it's two separate videos, um, this, as we said that this is our spoiler review, go check out our other review because there's going to be a lot of stuff that we um, don't talk about in the spoiler review that we talk about in the non-spoiler review. Go check that out first. Annotations, um, part one. <laughs> yeah. Get in there. We'll link it somewhere. Um, I, I've been talking about this first 20 minutes. I, I just thought it was so, so good. And like the knife scene. The knife fight. I mean, oh that's- Oh my God. That's when it clicked in my mind that this is a step above in terms of action because that was fucking cool. And it's just like, I haven't seen so many kind of- I, I hadn't seen that visual before, mm. at least in recent memory. And I thought that was so strong and- really put a, a solid foot forward to establish this film at the beginning. Well, and that in combination with the book scene, which um, oh, I've yeah, already seen fuck. mentioned so much. The movie just came out today. Oh, my um, God. Like That was like the first kill in the movie, I think, and that was like... That was audible gasps. Shit, yeah. Well, that was that was the part that really, like, that's when I was like, oh, they're stepping, like, the, the entire audience had that kind of like, oh, mm. shit. Like, they've when just... When he broke his neck on that goddamn book. They, they're, making, they're making a mission statement right, yeah. right here. Yeah. Um, they flew in that sound effects from when Thanos hits uh, Hulk at the beginning <laughs> yeah. of Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. Straight in. Yeah. And it was I, brutal. And I thought that, that beginning with just those two very different kind of fight scenes was... Um, really indicative of, of the rest of this film. Like like I said before, so many varied, just different kinds. Like, you know, you have like like sword fights and yeah. bike fights, dog fights. <laughs> it's yeah. all over the place. So um, I really like the the tension building, but also the, the you're kind of going through the process of someone being excommunicated. Like they kind of started up that uh, at the end of the last one. And I like how they just picked it up and they're doing like the countdown. And the, there's a, I just love the idea that there's a whole world that's operating. Yeah you know, below mm. the surface. And the tension in there, the yeah. editing, the direction was very strong, I thought. Um, I also loved, and I didn't mention this in the non-spoiler, but I feel like they know exactly where John, sit, John Wick sits in the market and what they're trying to do with this film. And what leads me to believe this is that, you know, they take the fight choreography so seriously with sophistication. And then you just get that bit where he lobs that ax at that <laughs> dude's head. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's like... This is fun, man. You know, mm. like they know yeah. they're not trying to make it super, super serious or like a Skyfall or something. Yeah. They know, hey, we got to have a bit of fun with this. It's a popcorn flick. Yeah, but they, I think they really strike that perfect balance. Yeah. Of, you know, all the characters take it really seriously, but the movie knows when they yes, have a bit of fun with yeah. it. Yeah, totally. Like they're, all these characters are all spouting all this lore and shit and it's so dense, but, you know, they're not really winking at you necessarily, but they don't need you to take it super seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean... Post that first 20 minutes, like that kind of tension building scene. Fucking love the world building around that whole Russian school for assassins. Uh, and, and we got that kind of tease on his... Um, his youth. His youth. But mm. I don't know. There's something about the aesthetic of that kind of Russian mob, particularly like these big tatted up dudes. And, you know, that that kind of thing I think is really cool. I mean, and, and in terms of like seeing that on film, I think that there's something really aesthetically interesting about that style as well. Mm. So that whole thing where he's talking to um, what's Angelica Houston, yeah, Angelica Houston. I thought that that whole scene and that whole exploration into that world was super cool. Um, and I love how that there's obviously these different little factions that sit yeah, that's apart what I from the high table, but also that that you know are you know, quote unquote under the table. Yeah, I liked how he sort of walked into that really ornate, um, old school regal theater, yeah. and he sort of has this bargaining chip that he he presents, and you're not really clued in about what that arrangement was or whatnot. But he waltzes in, and you're like, okay, there's these agreements that I don't know to know need to know all the details of, but mm. I'm just going along with it. And I think that that's what I really appreciate about this film. It doesn't always spoon feed you everything, but I, I liked the the ballet and then the the, the Greco Roman wrestling they were doing. Like they, yeah. it was just it was. I enjoyed that sequence as well. Yeah, mm. and um, I, I really loved the little joke about the belt um and i am particularly thrilled that they made a callback to that at the end of the film with him taking off the belt awesome foreshadowing yeah really really enjoyed that like like he's a deadly dude and he's even deadlier when he has a belt in his hand yeah. <laughs> like, deadly <laughs> how good is that yeah mm. um so yeah I, I i really enjoyed that little piece of world building i definitely 
Um, I'm really glad that they put that in there. Um, post that, the the we talked about the kind of lull. The lull kicks the, in hard. Casablanca. The, Casablanca. Felt is, as long as Casablanca. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably where I would have really enjoyed some um, tightening up. Even the action scene, which was really cool, particularly mm. with the dogs, I think that they could have cut about a, you know, a quarter or a fifth of that scene off. Because mm. you can only see so many guys get fucking sniped in the head, but you're like, I get it. That, that's the thing I really loved about the knife fight. It was just long enough that you got the thrill out of it. And, you know, just before it started getting monotonous, they moved on. And, and I felt like they didn't quite hit that mark with that particular scene. I definitely did not tire of seeing the dogs chewing people up. I, I, it was just, especially yeah. in this series, so cathartic to see the dogs getting some back, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really enjoyed no, that. 100% I'll agree with that. But mm. I was really glazing over in this mm. fight sequence. Mm. Yeah, I, I meant like more than like them just headshotting people. Like, again, it's cool action, but that's not, like, that's what we've gotten for the last three films. And so I didn't like... I, I didn't particularly latch on to Halle Ber- Berry's character other than the fact of her relationship with the dogs. Mm. I thought that was really cool and uh, I, I I got that. Mm. But, uh, man, it was just like they were talking to each other and explaining and this and that. And I was like, show me, don't tell me. Don't don't explain everything to me. Yeah, yeah I, I like- feel like a new time viewer would be like, oh, she must have been in the second one, right? Yeah. Um, and you'd be like, no, it's like, okay, so why is she in this one? <laughs> I, I liked the... Um, I thought it was interesting them talking about the daughter and like his favor to her. Um, but I totally agree. I think that could have been really condensed because um, there's a lot of kind of superfluous yeah. dialogue. And I mean, and then you go from that scene directly to another dialogue scene, which in again, on its own is, is pretty interesting, I suppose, but not altogether too impactful. With that guy in the castle? You mean that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, what's his name? Jerome Flynn. Drunk Honestly, I was like, what's going on? I, I have no idea what's going on right mm. now. Let's keep this going. Yeah. And that was also, momentum. there was also no context as to who he was. Was he someone that had a seat on the high table? Was he like, I just, I didn't quite, that just, again, that felt a little bit off. So I think that everything in Casablanca, I could have probably done with that entire sequence. Harvest. Like, Remove it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think, it, you know, it's a linking piece. I, th- I think um, the movie could have moved on without that entire like 20, 30 minutes um, with like a line of dialogue and you mm. you wouldn't really notice. Then you um, missed the dog scene. Yeah, but you wouldn't know. Like well, yeah. you wouldn't actually <laughs> so, yeah, miss I suppose, it because yeah. it never existed. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I, 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 to be fair, I am, glad that that, <laughs> I am glad that that scene is in there because mm. particularly the first time you see those dogs go go hell for leather, it's really cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, just good if fun. that could have been trimmed off. Um, and then you get the bit where he's like in Jakku walking through the desert and i was like uh, man we need let's get this guy on keanu come see, on I, man i liked that that's let's go, let's that go. particular aspect of the lore like see the casablanca thing didn't really do anything new it didn't really add that much to the lore it kind of it was just a, a stepping stone to get to something interesting um that what hit the whole desert scene there was something interesting like you you found out that there's a guy that sits above the table um, you know, the, I, I loved the aesthetic of the, the desert. I love the aesthetic of like that little, the Bedouin tent thing. Um, and, and I kind of liked the concept of this guy being like, I liked that there was a concept of like the service that he was demanding from John Wick and that, you know, when he goes back, he's going back in the service of like the highest thing. Like, I think that's kind of cool. Did you enjoy that? No strong feelings one way or the other. Like, I was, was just, just like, I was just like, if you had taken... If you like when it get got back to New York and you know the bike scene and all that, that's when I was like, okay, yes, mm. the momentum, we're back, baby, we're mm. back. But that whole bit there, that was a solid hour or forty five minutes. Like mm. I just thought that was so so weak. Do you think that it's because the um, Morocco scene was dragged on a little bit that like you were starting on the back foot? Probably because I think that like I mean. I, I still got something out of that scene. Um, I think that the what people will experience is a bit of fatigue mm. and that starts to pick them up. And by the time that they get to New York, they're back in the game. Yeah. The only thing that I got out of that scene was, man, they're going to have to green screen uh, His finger. Keanu Reeves' <laughs> finger mm. for the rest of these movies. Mm. Bit of a, uh, a bold choice yeah. to just like have him chop off his own finger. It's kind of a he badass He gets branded move. a lot in this movie. God, he just punishment yeah, it's intense. Uh, did you guys like the concept of him like almost like the zelda 
you know, you got to go on the quest and you've got the three items and like, did you guys dig that? You know, he goes to the book at the beginning and he's got the sort of three or four items and he yeah. gradually goes through them. Did, yeah. did you guys like that? I mean, yeah, that's kind got of- got him moving. It's, yeah. it's the, <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. Got him moving. Like John Wick movies are never going to have complex plots. The complexity and the intrigue comes around- you know, as I said, the action and the world building, that's what's really going to move things along. Mm. The The first one had the the kind of novelty of all that. But, I mean, none of these movies I'd say have... the plot is complex. I would say it's to the point of being convoluted. Like, I could not describe to you beat for beat in, I mean, in I mean, great in, detail I what this movie is no doing. I had no idea. Well, I have no beat, idea who Halle Berry is. is really, <laughs> beat for beat is, is easy. Beat for beat is he goes from... He runs away from New York. He goes to... Morocco from Morocco, he needs to find the guy at the high table. He but finds as the guy I said, in, great, in great detail. Yeah, I, oh, I, I but yeah, not, but I mean, yeah. but we're talking plot points here, so like it's not a very but convoluted. It, like the thing is, is what, it's like why are we here? Why are we doing this? Mm. And that's where I need that justification. I need that tension. I need that conflict or something. And that's where the film lost me a little bit. Yeah, and I'm not bothered by it. I'm just not no, engaged it's not, by it either. And, and you know, I'm still gave this a very positive review. Mm. It's just like those little tweaks, and you know, where where were those points where it could have been? Tightened up a little yeah. bit. But then when it does tighten up and really finds focus in that he has to kill... Um, Winston. Yeah. And then, you know, just brings up this whole final sequence. I'm like, Did, all of that is fucking gold. That sequence is hectic. I, I mean, really uh, enjoyed that. Just before that, that the, the, the bike sequence was mm. so fucking cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Very, very well realized. I really want to know how they shot that. CG. I felt like... Um, same with the horse scene at the, at the beginning. Mm. They were very, very well done because normally you get that like warbly, they're on the back mm. of a horse or they're mm. on the bike. But I didn't get that warbliness in the CG. I. Which I'm, I thought was like... It they, like they were doing it. I'm like, they must have been <laughs> on some kind of truck and then they had them there must like attached been. to it and then they were sort of cutting around with, with some CG um, yeah. blending. I mean, the only time anything looked like at all rubbery was when someone was going off off of a bike something that was like clearly clearly cgi but like the actual interaction between the bikes looked kind of photorealist like it looked like they were actually doing it very cool um really just before impressive. we move on I, you just did mention horses and i'm saying john wick using a horse as a weapon was the best fucking thing in oh, oh okay God. okay i will but the second time they did it i was like <laughs> nah man you <laughs> fucked it you- i love the second time because he was actually aiming it like he was <laughs> he like he was aiming it like, and he double tapped <laughs> yeah that yeah. was the really no, bizarre thing no, like, pop, pop, brilliant. Like, uh, no i'm sorry i, I that. was like I fist it. in the air the first time the second time i was like fuck well, you the, guys the first time was so visceral because it like caved the guy's head <laughs> in as well oh like, shit fuck Oh, um, he aims the horse. Yeah. Also, that's not what happens with horses, but like, <laughs> um, they can't. Yeah, that's I, the thing. Like, I can buy it once, but like, yeah. I buy it. it's not like some kind of mechanism. That's with what a trigger. happens with, when John Wick has a horse. Yeah, so, okay. well, exactly. Sorry, my bad. It touches um, the animal. <laughs> so yeah, I really enjoyed. Like, I I thought that when they, I I know what you were talking about, Ben, when you when you said that I felt like the movie was ending. Like when he doesn't kill Winston, it kind of feels like that's going to be the end, and like the next movie is going to be the fight for the Continental. And I, um, when when I realized that they were actually going to do it, I had this kind of two part thing in my head, which was. Really? Like, do we have time to, like, are we going to do an entire another big sequence? Like, fuck, how long is this mm. movie? But, you know, at the same time, I was like, I really love where this is going. I really want to see this. Like, I, I'd be kind of cut if they just ended the movie here. So, and it, was, it more than delivered. It's just, oh my fucking God. Ge- strike a genius. The, the head proof, uh, the headshot proof yeah, yeah. guards. <laughs> it's like your John Wick's nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the way it plays out is so good. Like, he's just shooting these guys. He keeps shooting. They just keep getting up. He's like, yeah. Whoa. Fuck, and yeah. he has to like actually get in there and like. Yeah, oh. yeah, I thought that that was really, and this is what I meant about about this movie, you know, taking that action to the next level. They didn't just let him do the same thing because how kind of anticlimactic would have that that final fight scene been if it was just like you know just like every other you know him with a pistol scene that we've seen. Mm. Um, so I think that they did a really good job of bringing something new into that. I love the aesthetic of it loved you know them going down there and i love that they he got the um concierge involved <laughs> yes i like i, really I also thought there that. was a bit of a callback to the first matrix um i don't know maybe it was just me looking into it a bit but like the green lighting and that mm. that main hall area mm. it just oh, okay. kind of evoked a little bit of that 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 final sequence in the the matrix intentionally or not uh, i i kind of got a little bit of a kick out of that 
Yeah. But um, I, the, the aesthetic and the set of that final um, sequence in the glass, mm. I mean, how, I mean, we have a problem here within the glass uh, covering these um, posters, you know, in our set, mm. you know, imagine the camera and the amount of reflective surfaces in mm. there. I mean, that would have been a feat in of itself, just logistically yeah. how to put that together. And then um, it just looked, it just had like this real sparkle, uh, I was very impressed with yeah. the geometric. Not to I also thought the amount of glass that they put Keanu through. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that was so funny. I was just like, it was. It was obviously CG, so the glass, and and every time it just kind of, mm. you know, I, 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 the way I thought they achieved that was there was there was no. Of the, none of those glass uh But I love how his there. body like ragdolls. Yeah, every, like yeah. they just <laughs> fucking put him through the ringer. But mm. the glass just went like it, it yeah. shattered. It was it was funny. I I thought it was funny. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I mean, you were talking about like camera angles and that with the glass. I also noticed that that in the fir- one of the first scenes, they run through this kind of hallway filled with mirrors, and I thought that is actually a really impressive scene. Because, you know, as you're tracking through that, you would have to think about all the different angles on all those different mirrors to make sure that nothing kind of slips by. Like, I thought it was really impressive mm. um, that they were able to do that. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, the One of the... I, I loved the gag of um, him coming back for Stronger Weapons. Mm. Oh, oh, that, that was, was really so good. Hugh Jackson scene is like, this isn't working. <laughs> Goes yeah. back to the armory. Like, when have you seen that before? But I love so how it was just kind of like, pause game. Yeah. You know, it was like uh, the guys weren't chasing him or anything. He's like, listen, just give me five minutes, guys. Yeah. All right, let me go sort this out. Yeah. Um, and it was so good seeing Lance Reddick, the, the concierge, like actually involved in the yeah. action this third one. Yeah. That's that's the kind of thing I like to see from sequels. Yeah. Um, the the two, I'm assuming they were Filipino. I, I didn't, the the accent or the language sounded like Filipino or something they're like Indonesian. that. They're Indonesian. They're from the, from one the of them's on the radar list. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I assume that that's who they were. Mm. Um the that fight scene very cool i thought that was very very well done it's super fun just the way that they and um mark dacascos were just fanboying over him I'm yeah like, that's a, a fun yeah. and then they let, they let him go and they're like let's go for another round you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is he is you know we want to get the best version of john wick and mm. and as i said before in the non-spoiler i was just very impressed with holding onto the shots and letting the fight play out without over editing I think that's um, a ballsy move, and I was very impressed yeah. there. Mm. And um, you know, I know I mentioned their accent and, and that language, but I, I just love I can I, I love that accent. I love that language. Like it just it, it's got such a like a gutter like cool sound to it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed everything about that scene and the cheekiness of it. I even the following scene where he um, uh, fights the main bad guy, the fifty year old dude, Japanese guy. Um, again. I love the cheekiness of that. Like, I love how at no point does it feel over serious. Yes. And that's the strength of this film is, yeah. is maintaining that sophistication whilst not taking itself too, too, too seriously and kind of always knowing where it sits. Mm. Um, I guess then we get to the final scene. Unless anyone wants to talk more about that. Uh, Sequence. No, no. I mean, like it's it's action scenes. So you can only talk yeah. about so much with it. But um, I mean, the I I can say I did not see that coming. Yeah, that? the the you the, know the Ian McShane the betrayal. shooting him and and I'm kind of, I'm torn because I really like him working with Ian McShane. Like I I liked that relationship, and I think mm. that it's a bit of a shame that um, I I kind of liked the concept of just the continental versus the high table. Like that, that to me was really interesting. Mm. And it's a bit of a bummer that, um, cause I didn't like Lawrence Fis- Fishburne as much. And I really liked Ian McShane. And I just, I don't know how I feel about that being switched around now. Mm. Yeah. Hell of a fall he took off the building though. Oh, God, that was fucking that's, awesome. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way he would survive. Bulletproof suit, mate. It saves you from Fuck falls you. Off, <laughs> off high buildings. Fuck you. Well, I mean, no, I, I've not a gravity loved, suit. Yeah, I've always loved in movies that like the way that they think physics works is if you get like a, a bar that stops your fall halfway down, that suddenly you're good. But didn't he land on his back? Like it looked like a backbreaker. Mm. I mean, all of that looked like everything breaker. I mean, it probably was all broken. I just thought it was not part of the John Wick DNA. That that Mm. the way that all looked, the CG, I was like, that is not a John Wick kind of shot. That that's not how you deal with that scenario. I thought it looked fucking great, and and definitely there is that element of like, no one's going to survive that. But whatever, I don't care. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I just seem very out of character. Mm. Yeah. Would you have preferred if that happened and he was just dead? Fuck yeah. I mean, John Wick <laughs> that would have been three, pretty cool, wouldn't it? Like, Parabellum. <laughs> like the adjudicator goes around the corner to check on him and Good. she just finds him and he's like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, 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 it'll remain to be seen how I feel about it. I think with John Wick 4 is kind of how that'll... 100% is coming. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Um, but... Yeah, it's it certainly didn't see it coming. Yeah, it's definitely set up for a four, so yeah. that was cool. I, I um, I, I, I this I know this is going back a bit, but I thought it was so funny when Ian McShane's giving that speech and he's like, "Parabellum," and it's, you know, yeah. war at the bottom. I just, I, it was funny. It was yeah. funny as fuck. Was it? <laughs> I thought it was so funny. It just was like, that's why the movie's called Parabellum. Yeah. Um, I like that Ian McShane's in two movies with the Baba Yaga this year. That's true. And what one of them better than the other one. I won't say which is which. Way. What was the other one? Hellboy. Oh, Hell Kid. Lord, yeah, that's right. He's erased it from that's, his memory that's already. Not in, we don't have to do that. <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> Worst of the year. You'll have to bring that shit up. <laughs> yeah. That's actually really exciting. We get to do our best and worst of the year soon, or half year. Yeah, mm. we work mm. in six month chunks here. Yeah. Any other little tidbits? I, what about uh, Lawrence Fishburne? We didn't get to talk about him getting yeah. slashed up. Seven slashes. Well, yeah, Angelica of... Houston got off a, a, off a lot easier than everyone else. I feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. Um, oh, there is one thing I wanted to mention. Um, I found the dog. Like in the second one, I thought it was a bit weird that like. The whole thing is about him having the dog and then he just gives the dog to um, the concierge and then picks him up at the end and then it's kind of like a convenient way to get the dog out of the way. But that he just does the same thing this time. And I, I kind of felt like it's not a it's not a, a big thing, but I was like, ah, I don't know. It just it feels like you just it, all the John Wick movies are going to involve like him getting rid of the dog at the beginning and then picking him up at the end. <laughs> like that's just going to be a, a, staple, a staple of these. He's movies. a responsible dog owner. Uh, well, yeah, and that's nowadays. the kind of thing they've they've written themselves into a bit of a corner here where he has to deal. Like he can't get rid of the dog. They can't kill the dog again because that's fucked. That's number five. Yeah, <laughs> and then and and he's got to like you know. He's just going to have to like, there. you know, you know, people will lose their shit if he doesn't responsibly take care of his dog, like give it to a concierge or something. Well, that's the thing. So. I really enjoyed the relationship with the dog in this one. Like he puts the dog in a taxi at the beginning. He's yeah. like, take this yeah. dog. <laughs> and then he, you see him again, I think more in this movie than in the last one. Yeah, um, definitely. But And there was a lot of references it. to uh, the, the the original dog. Mm. Uh, and they, they, was, they were fun little jokes and little references yeah. in there. The, you know, I... Sorry, sorry for killing all these people. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just shot my dog. Yeah. Mm. That got an audible laugh out of this. Oh, thing. totally. Yeah. I think they all they all landed pretty well. Yeah. Any final tidbits, fellas? Any other little cap offs, wrap ups? No, look, freestyles. I think, I think this is as I, I said freestyle. before, <laughs> is a really enjoyable film. Like, there's no other way to put it. That you know, I think that um, even you know, even that middle part, which can get a little bit tedious, um, you know. If you're willing to get kind of through that, I think it, there's a lot to be had out of this film. Let, let's cap it off with one final question: Is this this is number one for you, Benny, mm -hmm. in the franchise? Is this number one for you, Connor? At the moment, it's sitting at one, but that's just because I've just seen it and it's kind of fresh and exciting. But, and, and it's because it, you've you, as we've said like eight times on this podcast, you have seen the, the other two yeah. recently. Um, this is better than the first one, you would say? It's 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 hard to say. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said, it's only above there right now because I've just seen it and it's okay. fresh and it's exciting. Um, I think as you know, time goes on, the first one will still kind of hold that top spot just because that's the one that had the the novelty to it. That one was the one that was kind of, you know, it didn't, it wasn't beholden to anything. It was just kind of introduction. Like, I think that's really cool. Yeah. And it had Mikael Blunkvist from Girl the Dragon mm. Tattoo. That keeps it at number one for me. And Alfie Ar Allen from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that's our John Wick 3 review. Let us know what you thought in the comments. And uh, we got so many things coming up. It's going to be wild. Aladdin next week. Ooh, wee. Ooh. Watch out. That's going to be fun. Some Rick and Morty reference. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back for the weekly movie show as well. Content galore. Hit that subscribe button. It's going to be great. See you next week, Connor. Catch you. See you, see you Connor. 
<laughs> fuck. Uh, can, Betty's can, just can, like catch you. <laughs> Betty's just like, oh fuck, it spits in my leave. face. Yeah. <laughs> Slide out of screen. See right. you, Benny. Yes. Also goodbye. See you, George. That's my name. Let's not talk to myself. Though.